Again, um, like some of the other people speaking before me, I uh, have to disappoint you, I will not be speaking much of archaeological samples, I'll keep to the modern, because sometimes we need to study modern samples to learn a little bit more before we start doing archaeological stuff. So, for this presentation, I will be presenting um, the multi-proxy approach that we have developed in, the, in our lab at the University of Brussels, a little bit of help again, which is also in Belgium, um, which will be applied to a different kind of uh, samples and I'll be talking about uh, the applications of the proxy uh, approach for studying mammal to an animal. Um, so, first of all, <coughs> for those of you who work on an animal, you know there's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, you can reconstruct these seasonal patterns and you can try to reconstruct um, environmental change over the seasons, which is very interesting. It's one of my favorite topics actually. Um, like you've seen in the last um, Presentation, there's you can do trophic level studies also we've seen. It's from the nitrogen isotopes, as an example. And there's provenancing which you can do with, for example, strontium isotopes and oxygen isotopes. Um, the, the problem is a lot of these isotope systems and possibly also trace element systems are influenced by one or more of these uh, different effects on mobility and influence your environment and influence your diet. So uh, it will be very interesting to uh, try to disentangle these different uh, parameters and find new proxies that can help us do that. Um, so for that, I'll first go to the difficult chemical formula of bioaptides. I'm sorry for that. Uh, mostly, it looks very complicated, but bioaptides are mostly calcium phosphate with some substitutions. So which I've colored here. Um, there's the phosphate and there's some the carbonates, which we also measure. Probably, and you can do carbon and oxygen isotopes in the carbonate via an uh, appetite. You can do oxygen isotopes in the phosphate, which we also do. And um, it's very interesting to get different results. For example, the carbon isotopes can be used for dietary studies, mostly oxygen isotopes. It tells you something about the water cycle. And we have the strontium isotopes, which, which are right here. There's a calcium in the structure, which can be used, as I said before, for provenance studies. Uh, but then there's this. The rest of all these cations can be in this part of the formula, which are not used so much. In the, in the, we've seen the zinc talk, so maybe it's picking up a bit. Uh, but mostly people use isotopes, not so much trace elements in, uh, in enamel. Um, so I thought it would be interesting to see, measure a couple of these trace elements in bioappetites of, uh, of mammal enamel and see what it gives, how it compares to other proxies, see if we can use them in a multi proxy approach to get rid of some of these effects of different parameters influencing one uh, one proxy and use them to reconstruct uh, diet and mobility, environmental change. So in order to do that, I've studied modern horse and kind of treated the horse like a like the black box, so to say. Um, so <coughs> the horse that I will present here um, grew up in uh, close to Ghent in Belgium, <coughs> in control conditions, we know what it ate approximately, we know the water composition. Um, so it's very interesting, you can basically put the parameters that we know in the horse, get the teeth out, measure them, and then get our uh, proxies, and then we can try to learn something about the, what um, the proxies tell us about the environment, the diet of the horse. Also, this is a domestic horse, so we basically get rid of the mobility parameter. You know, so. We're just looking at environmental and dietary um, influences on these proxies. It's very handy because mobility kind of ruins everything because you can get different diet and different environments to move around. So <coughs> we're now trying to disentangle those two. So there's a few techniques that we use uh, in, in Brussels. One of my favorite ones is this one, the micro XRF. Um, some of you might have heard of it. Basically, what it does is an, it's an instrument you place in your sample and it focuses X ray beams at a spot of 25 micrometers and it looks at the fluorescent spectrum. So, different elements fluoresce at different <coughs> places in the spectrum and it allows you to do um, high resolution trace element analysis without actually destroying the sample. You can go on the surface of the sample and you can do this basically before doing all the other stuff where you have to drill with your teeth. It's very nice. Um, what you can also do, I think, different settings, you can actually map like a section of a tube, for example, and identify different phases within the tube or within any other sample that you'd like to measure. 
Um, what are options here? Mostly is these. Um, these are, it's hard to see when you see more of them. These um, profiles that we, that we do through the growth direction of the tooth, um, measuring trace elements, different trace elements, to see what they show and how they relate to the isotope um, profiles that we have in the same teeth. So then there's, of course, um, mass spectrometry, which you can use to do um, carbon oxygen and strontium isotopes, oxygen of both the carbon and the phosphate, the carbonate and phosphate in the teeth. And you need to do the microscopy to identify different um, phases within the tooth, so we're sure that we measure the enamel, not the dentine, because as you will see later, this gives very different results. So first, the micro -extra. So basically what you, what you do, you put in the teeth, and it's, as you see, you can go very high resolution, and you get these records of different trace elements, zinc, strontium, iron, potassium, sulfur, magnesium, and uh, if the time that you measure per point is long enough, if you have enough time, then you can actually make nice quantitative profiles of these elements and compare them with oxygen and carbon isotopes to see how they relate to each other. So in the study to begin with, what I did is measure from the um, horse, uh, the advance of course, if it's a modern horse, so I have all the teeth, I have all the pre-motors and motors, I measured all the teeth, oh, it's too fast. And basically, one by one, you can put them on the chronology during the lifetime of the horse and create this kind of multi-year um, chronology of the isotopes, which we can then use to put the trace elements on in the time. So we're really sure that it's the seasonality that we're seeing here, not something else. Of course, if you only measure one teeth, then it's always a question whether where in the year you are, because it's not by a year and a tooth sometimes. So that's uh, nice. What you can see here already is that um, oxygen isotopes, following the eruption pattern of teeth, they follow the, the temperature, the seasonality basically, so oxygen isotopes this is to be expected, they, they follow the biological cycle, so they'll be um, following this uh, seasonality. The carbon isotopes are kind of different and they're more related to diet. So that's already the two different environment and diet parameters that we have separated. And so we now is take the other proxies and see how they relate to one of these two. And if we do that for a couple of trace elements, I have strontium, zinc, iron, potassium, and sulfur here. You see that they all nice line up with the oxygen isotopes, a little bit of a lag. Um, and they show this nice seasonal pattern. It's very nice results. Came in last year in November. I was very happy with it, but of course then we have to figure out what it means, because it's not something that's been done much. Um, so first uh, hypothesis, we have two hypotheses, one is it might be the diet, or it might be some sort of dust input, I think it's mentioned before in one of the other um, presentations, but, you know, for example. So let's try to exclude that, we went to a little bit more in-depth research and took one of the teeth, mapped it using uh, micro XRF, it's a uh, microscopy on it, it's five different phases in the tooth, and then we use another method for trace element analysis, which is slowing again. It's called laser ablation ICP mass. It's a method where you shoot a laser at a different spot. And you do basically kind of the same as the micro XRF. Um, it's also giving trace element results. It's basically used to verify our micro XRF results to see whether they are repeatable, which it turns out they are. It's very close. So that's very happy. Very happy with that. Also, if we measure different enamel layers within the the structure of the horse teeth. You can see that the parallel layers that are formed in the same time during the growth, they give the same results. So the, the trace element pattern, the strontium calcium teeth, for example, is very repeatable. It's interesting, it means that there's really something that's not local in the tooth, but it's really a, a general process. Um, and then we did a couple of cross lines here, which are shown all the way to the right, just to show that there's a quite a big difference we measure the enamel, which is the blue, and dentin, which is uh, green. Dentin always has much higher um, quantities of these trace elements. So you have to be really careful only to sample enamel. Maybe this is So, um, if you sum it all up with the strontium isotopes and the oxygen isotope phosphates, you see that um, the strontium isotopes, as well as the strontium calcium ratio, which is, this, um, is in the face of the other trace elements, follows. A similar pattern to the carbonized, those which leads us to uh, conclude to assume for now at least that might 
It's probably a diet control signal. So just uh, elements and teeth from time. Uh, um, following the diet of the animals, and just um, if you look at the strong survival stokes, changes are kind of decimal. They're, they're quite small, but there's, there's small changes in diet because the horse is in winter fed with um, barley instead of just grass. It's grass in the summer, so there's a little bit of an offset, it's not a big one, but that's perfectly in, in line with what we, what we observe here. Also, um, cost saving carbon and oxygen isotopes, they're following the same pattern. They have an 8.5 per mil offset, and they are environmental control. Um, so, if we look at the, the, um, the different lines between the two, uh, you can see that the patterns here through the uh, growth of the two that are repeatable, as I said. And again, you can see here that enamel has lower values, so you have to be really careful because if you measure a little bit of density, if you would measure with uh, gel samples, you really get a big difference in how high stuff results and uh, trace element results. Um, so we conclude here that these trace element profiles are diet. Um, just to com conclude, um, it's just for a modern tool, of course. We can do reproducible trace elements. Uh, analysis in these modern mammal teeth, and the question is now, of course, can we uh, do this on the, on the archaeological and even fossil and paleontological teeth too to, to see if we can reconstruct diet in the past? Um, it will depend on whether the uh, trace element is preserved or not in the tooth, in the tooth enamel. Um, and these can be, these diets uh, linked with the trace elements can possibly be used as a paleo dietary proxy. All the trade elements, and again, the exactly this is supposed to be car, uh, oxygen isotopes, and they're both phosphates and carbonates. They uh, follow the same trends. They have eight and a half percent offsets, and they they might be a nice proxy for diagenesis. Carbonate oxygen is more prone to diagenesis if you uh, have an archaeological sample and your carbonates, uh, the stable oxygen isotopes, your phosphate stable oxygen isotopes don't follow the same trends. Have to be careful in interpreting it because it might be something in it. And if it's preserved, it can be an ice proxy or is an ice proxy for environmental seasonality in the mammal teeth. So before I stop, I wanted just to mention that we have Christoph and I have a poster on also. So if you have anything that's a uh, question or discussion that's a bit too long for now, you can come to our poster and we'll be there and happy to answer it. Uh, thank you for your attention. Вот мама другая, судя я у нее.